what is the difference of uh, EDR to XDR? Is there any difference? Um, what should we expect with an XDR component of SOFOS? So just quick reminders, uh, all attendees are placed on mute. The webinar is actually being recorded. I hope uh, you don't mind that. Questions, please feel free to type in your questions over the chat box and we'll address it on our Q&A portion as fast as we can. And feedback form. So as I've mentioned um, on our previous webinars, the feedback form is actually, um, it helps us a lot and we highly encourage everyone to answer the feedback form. And we will uh, provide a few minutes later for the feedback form before we proceed with our post activity. So the feedback form will be your ticket in your uh, in our post activity later. That would be the quizzes. That would consist of five questions in relation to the content for this morning. So uh, good luck to that to everyone. Of course, we will have our tokens of appreciations again for our post content or for our post activity rather later. So good morning, everyone. I'm Anthony Arroyo. I will be your host for today. I'm the product manager here at WSI Handling Sophos, and let's proceed. So just a quick overview, uh, especially for the new ones that are here in the call. So we are WSI, we are WordTech Systems. We are in the IT industry as distributors um, for IT solutions for the past 39 years already. Uh, we're going to celebrate actually our 40th year next year. And we handle IT solutions from a broad um, perspective, or at least from a broad portfolio of IT solution requirements of your customers. That would be telecommunications, backup, design, printing, imaging, infrastructure, and of course, cybersecurity, which is specifically SOFOS. So our headquarters is at Metropolitan Ave at Makati. You could find us there. And we also have two offices at uh, our Vismin area, which is at Cebu branch and Davao branch. You could also reach us over our um, sales email at sales at wsifil.com.ph. And lastly, we also have uh, our website. Please feel free to check our website, especially if you are looking for other IT solutions as well, besides SOFOS, uh, it would be www.wordtex.com.ph. Please feel free to check our official website. We also have social media presence at uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and um, uh, YouTube as well. Uh, there are webinar recordings there. Please feel free to check it out. Maybe that would help you out, especially if you have inquiries or you just want further information on our solutions. Please feel free to check it out. And lastly, we also have our e-commerce site, which is www.wesellit.ph. If you ever have some individual requirements for your personal consumption, please feel free to check out our e-commerce site. So now we're going to proceed with EDR to XDR. What are the differences? And before we, we do that, just give me just a few seconds to just recheck again if everything is in order. Okay, I believe everything is all good. And um, we're going to discuss um, the expectations of EDR to XDR. I'm quite sure you are hearing about um, EDR or XDR in general with your customers. And um, on our perspective, especially on extended detection and response, what would be the expectations that uh, you would find in the perspective of SOFOS? So let's proceed, everyone. Okay, quick thing first. EDR and XDR are actually overlapping in the market, but it's not identical. Um, uh, there are differences, actually. And primarily, EDR and XDR are divided, or at least um, there is a delineation of uh, market segmentation in relation to the requirements of your customers. So EDR is primarily for endpoint buyers. These are the ones that looks for protection and looks for augmentation of feature sets more than the capabilities of, let's say, an endpoint protection. And uh, primarily, they are looking for uh, threat hunting capabilities, um, response capabilities, automation capabilities for the endpoint, and um, so on and so forth. But for the XDR, it's primarily on the perspective, generally, on the perspective of a security operations. So for the security operations, looking into the bigger picture, um, considering the network, considering the email, and considering other data sets as well, like, for example, mobile security, these are the ones that are looking for a further extension of detection and response capabilities of the um, security solution that they are considering, especially in moving forward 
uh, in combating the attacks, in combating the the bad actors that they are um, encountering, or if, or possibly might encounter if they haven't yet, and if they haven't yet encountered it as of uh, today. So that is the delineation uh, in general of what an EDR requirement and an XDR requirement. Again, an EDR requirement is primarily for those customers that are just looking for um, solutions or security solutions in the perspective of the endpoint layer. For the XDR, this is a higher lever, uh, layer, rather, and um, this one is primarily the requirements of CISOs or let's say sec, um, um, SecOps teams. These are the ones that are looking for different layers as well and getting those data sets. So further have um, threat hunting capabilities to further have investigate, uh, investigation capabilities and um, all the detection and response capabilities, um, not just from the endpoint layer. So it's a bit fuzzy, primarily in relation to our friendly competitors. Um, these are some of our friendly competitors that focuses on, let's say, EDR and XDR. Like, for example, for our friendly competitor, like, let's say, Trend Micro, they have their Vision 1 XDR. For Palo Alto, they have their Cortex XDR. So the lines are quite fuzzy, especially on um, in the perspective of what is actually being offered into the market. And I do hope that this webinar would be an, at least an overview or a, a starting point of a discussion towards your customers in relation to um, how do we really look into an XDR um, requirement uh, towards your customers' needs. Okay, now this is the big question. Why? Why does an XDR, or uh, for our perspective for Sophos, why do we have an XDR or why did we move into coming from an EDR component to an XDR component? So I'll further elaborate later um, the big differences or at least um, the expectations for what an XDR, but just to sum it up, and this is what we are trying to um, deliver in relation to um, your takeaway after this webinar, is that our XDR, it, uh, there we do not have anymore an EDR component, but we only have now an XDR component already. So we'll just elaborate it later. But the question is, why did we do that? Why did Sophos do that? First is market disruption. So primarily, if we have a premium of an XDR component, especially in relation to our portfolio of Sophos portfolio, we would be able to um, basically disrupt the market in relation to providing complete um, detection and response capabilities for our um, XDR component and uh, leveraging our other components as well, such as firewall, email, mobile, and cloud, especially, of course, the endpoint and the server protection. The next reason is to simplify the detection and response into a single premium solution. So there won't be a need anymore of asking our customers, would you require, let's say, an EDR? Would you require an XDR? We'll further elaborate that later, primarily because the only option to look into a detection and response for our perspective is just our Sophos XDR at the baseline. Next is it benefits existing customers who invest in Sophos ecosystem, having the ability to future proof if ever they would require um, detection and response capabilities. And if ever they looked into Let's say they have an existing endpoint EDR or SIXA, uh, Intercept X, uh, Sophos Intercept X with an EDR. It, it was actually automatically upgraded already into XDR. And um, that further gives them uh, more ROI, especially if they choose to purchase, let's say, a Sophos firewall with an extreme license in the near future, then an XDR capability is already embedded with them, especially if they have an existing endpoint XDR. And lastly, it enables, of course, cross-selling. This one is a big benefit for all of us here in the call, primarily in terms of conversation, that they have a clear path in upgrading themselves into a further security or cybersecurity posture, especially in looking not just on the endpoint, but also on the network layer, on the cloud layer, and on the email layer. So all of us or all of the organizations, the big trinity is, of course, the email, the network, and the endpoint. We can all um, provide them a detection and response on those three requirements, email, endpoint, and um, um, uh, the network, which is the firewall, because all organizations all have that three solutions uh, requirement, 
especially in moving forward in the pandemic. So basically, that three is covered already uh, in relation to an XDR solution for SOFOS. And um, we also have uh, further uh, data sets as well, if ever they would require that, such as mobile security and uh, cloud security as well. So let's simplify things. This is the actual option in relation to um, your customers if they are looking into um, an endpoint security and especially in moving forward, let's say, with an extended detection and response. So first thing is the endpoint protection. So we know this as our Intercept X advanced endpoint protection that we provide to our customers, especially for their devices and for their users. But if they need further augmentation, which is, let's say, for their security analysts, if they have it, and also their IT administrators that needs uh, further threat hunting, looking into um, um, uh, across their data sets and across their estates, then an XDR component would be applicable for them. Lastly, if they need augmentation in relation naman sa kanilang IT capabilities or kanilang SOC capabilities, we can also provide an MTR component, which is SOFOS's um, 24 by 7 service that provides um, threat hunting service, uh, investigation service, and a lot more actually. And uh, the good thing there is that if we provide an MTR, it automatically includes an XDR um, tool set already on their license. Primarily because that is the one that will be used by the Sophos experts or by the Sophos MPR team when they provide the service on the on your customers as well. So to visualize everything, it would be as such: the XDR component um, on the lower or on the middle left of, the, of your screen of the slide will take data sets from the endpoint, the server, the email, the firewall and put it up um, uh, over the data lake as a 30 day retention if ever they uh, if, if ever they would need further investigative capabilities especially as um especially as um, um they would not require let's say uh the device that they're going to look into to be online primarily because they would leverage uh the data lake repository in what we do in relation to uh, our xdr capabilities putting up the data sets into the data lake or over the cloud so basically, we get the data sets of our mobile security, our um, server protection, our endpoint protection, our email protection, our firewall, and of course, our cloud security, which is our what we call the cloud optics. So this is the scope of our SOPOS XDR to put it into a visualization. Now, what are the key strengths of XDR and EDR, or basically the XDR itself? First things first, we leverage our endpoint protection technology, and we're very proud on our Intercept X primarily because it is an award-winning solution that uh, provides endpoint protection towards organizations. We've been in Gartner as a leader squadron for the past 12 years consecutively, and you could also see the ratings from other third-party accreditors as well uh, in showing the technology capabilities of our Intercept X. So we leverage from there. We use that as our baseline in their expectations on how we provide our security towards their um, security requirements. The next one is, of course, allowing an organization to do further threat hunting and investigation. So one big thing that we have is that, as I as I have shown you earlier, we have two options in terms of uh, data retention towards um, towards the data sets that we put up. That, uh, that would be utilized by, uh, let's say, IT admins of the organization. So the first option is our cloud, which is what we call the data lake repository. So that one is 30 days historical data. That one they could utilize. They don't need um, the device to be online, primarily because the IT administrators can access it over the cloud, over the data lake. But if they need further investigative um, um, capabilities, we also have the option of a 90 days um, data on the endpoint. This one is a super rich data. This one, um, I believe um, some or at least the majority of our friendly competitors don't have this capability yet. Uh, 90 days data retention. Once, for example, they put up the device, uh, goes into the cloud. Now the IT, or sorry, uh, goes into the internet. The IT administrators of, the, of our customers would be able to see that and to look into that uh, in, and do their investigative, their threat hunting 
on that device for at least a 90 day on data or on disk retention. So this one is also our capabilities in relation to XDR. SQL querying is also a big advantage, the ability to read or uh, a context of a file. We also provide that in our capability sets of our XDR component. And we also want to reiterate our Sophos intelligence, which is our Sophos labs. This is our ability to provide them in context um, threat intelligence, cyber intelligence, especially um, if they are doing their investigative work on what is happening in their IT infrastructure. They could leverage our Sophos Labs threat intelligence platform as well. Now, on the response side, we also have the capability to remediate threats automatically. So some of our friendly competitors focuses on these three things, block and terminate process, quarantine file, and isolate endpoint or auto and isolate. But for us, we have these capabilities um, to further expand our uh, feature sets towards the requirements of, let's say, as, um, a cybersecurity analyst of an organization, like, for example, remove known malware, clean up, clean up unknown threat artifacts. These capabilities can be further automated and would help alleviate the 24 by 7 internal requirements of their IT admins or their security admins. And this one is our proposition, especially in providing them further feature sets that they expect, especially in uh, relation to automation. So these are some of our capabilities that um, we could discuss with our um, customers as well that would, uh, again, alleviate their, um, their daily tasks especially in the perspective of IT or, um, let's say, a SOC team administrators. Now, um, this one is our, um, our visualization in relation to that we have a native integration, uh, primarily because our Sophos portfolio, as you've seen earlier on, the, on our adaptive cybersecurity ecosystem, we have a native integration towards our endpoint, our firewall and our email, as I've mentioned earlier, this is the big trinity of an organization. All organizations have these requirements as well. And we have this native integration in relation to providing them extended detection and response that they require in relation to sa cybersecurity posture. And also we have cloud and mobile. So this slide was primarily provided uh, early this 2021. And um, this 2021 la latter half, uh, we have the capability as well to integrate the cloud security or our um, cloud optics and of course our mobile security advance we could also integrate it inside the xdr ecosystem and lastly if ever they would need the mtr component like let's say for example as i've mentioned earlier and a further augmentation of their it team capabilities they could also look into our MTR service, which is the Sophos Managed Threat and Response Service. So that one will be utilized, uh, will be provided by Sophos experts, the MTR team, to provide them these feature sets that they might expect or they might require, especially in augmentation of their IT capabilities. So that one is also an, an option as well. Now, there are actually, let's focus now on the XDR. And uh, there are actually three common interpretations of XDR. Primarily, um, some call it, uh, let's say, cross-layered. Some other organizations or other um, um, third-party um, accreditors also call it cross-product. But for us, we call it extended detection and response. This is actually the common term. So that only means, to, to put it simply, is that we get a, lar uh, a bigger data sets, not just on the endpoint, because primarily we, um, um, the detection and response capabilities came from EDR, which is the endpoint detection and response. And now uh, it is a native move in relation to our product to move into firewall component, email component, mobile and cloud component, and provide that detection and response capabilities to the organization that requires it. So we call it extended detection and response or XDR for short. So there's a classic saying in InfoSec, prevention is ideal, but detection is a must. So most in the field are familiar with the saying, but it's often later in the organization's, uh, let's say security maturization or maturation rather, that something gets done about it. So eventually, for example, a CISO 
or security director or IT leader realizes that preventive controls like endpoint uh, protection and next gen firewall is while essential, just errant enough. So the question turns from what can we block to what are we missing? So this is the, the primary question that an XDR component um, provides an answer towards the organization. What are we missing? What can we do about it? So what uh, what are the others that we could not detect or our solutions could not detect so far, especially those um, sophisticated malware, those signatureless malware, the exploits, the vulnerabilities? What are we missing and what can we do about it? Can we automate our responses about it? Can we do something about it in relation to uh, um, doing a remediation remotely and a lot of the other use cases as well? And uh, these are the questions that an XDR alleviates in relation to an organization or to our customers. So threat detection and response is a methodology that enables security operators to detect attacks and neutralizes them before they cause disruption or become a breach, to put it simply. Now, however, while many, in fact, most organizations want to move to a threat detection and response approach, it's often a huge challenge because their tools and their data exist in silos. So IT security teams are trying to manage, let's say, multiple vendors or multiple tools, each with their own silos of data, each with their own methodologies on how to manage it, each with their own um, capability sets or certifications um, in how to manage, let's say, a different vendor from another vendor, an, an EDR vendor towards an endpoint vendor, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and a network vendor as well. So these managed or these siloed approach is a very challenging um, perspective towards an IT administrator or a SOC administrator. So it, the, the challenge there is that it provides limited integration, primarily in um, coordinating and consolidating all of those skill sets that you require in the perspective of an IT team. It also provides or at least has the potential for missed detections as well, primarily, as I mentioned earlier, um, if we have different vendor sets, they have different methodologies, they have different capabilities as well. It also provides complex investigations as a challenge towards the IT teams as well, especially the SOC teams or the ones that manages um, detection and response capabilities of an organization or a customer. And lastly, it now becomes an ineffective incident response, especially if they need to do an IR uh, mitigation towards, let's say, an existing situation that happened or an existing incident that happened in their company. So it is a very challenging thing if ever there are a lot of different siloed solutions on the perspective of an IT or SOC team administrator in relation to our customers or to, towards a company. Now, an XDR is um, the goal that, uh, that um, an XDR component, especially on our perspective, is to provide speed and efficiency. So we unify the data primarily because our portfolio has our Sophos firewall, has our um, email, has our cloud, has our um, server protection and our endpoint protection. It is a native integration, especially if we all know about synchronized security as well, our feature sets in integrating our components. So our XDR capability has a native integration of our portfolio and that provides a unified data it extends the visibility not just on the endpoint, it detects more threats across their estates of their IT infrastructure and has the ability to provide um, further deeper investigations towards the IT administrators, thereby having a reduced time to detect and respond and do their um, um, detection and response capabilities for their IT team's perspective, especially if they are doing it, um, let's say, day in and day out of their usual work um, process as well. So just an executive summary. EDR and XDR are combined into a single offering for SOFOS. So we include it as a cross product data of a 30 days of retention in data lake or over the cloud. And as I mentioned earlier, a 90 days on disk retention as well, especially for the capabilities of further investigation of their IT teams. Next is EDR customers were already upgraded to XDR um, last July 10. So existing EDR customers of Sophos, so that is the SIXA plus uh, EDR, 
were already upgraded with their license of an XDR. I believe everyone knows about this already. If you have a customer that previously from an ADR, uh, if you would check their license, it would be an XDR already. And no price increase. So basically, that's, as I've mentioned earlier, why we did it. It's primarily as a market disruption, as the ability to provide further ROI towards um, towards um, um, the organization's perspective. If they have, let's say, a previous year, they have a 6A plus EDR. It's now automatically 6A plus a, uh, XDR already without any price increase. Now, this is the prior package, but of course, don't mind this now because this is a misinterpretation of others that XDR is a paid for upgrade, that this is a prior packaging. What we are doing now is primarily removing the middle column and providing this. So if ever a customer requires a detection and response, then it with we uh, detection and response capabilities of, uh, let's say, an endpoint security, then we already provided it automatically as our intercept X advanced plus XDR license. XDR extends the detection and response as a visualization beyond the endpoint. So previously, as we know, the uh, um, um, the SIXA EDR, it's the endpoint security and the server security for our intercept X uh, with EDR. Now it becomes just one thing, extending the detection and response towards the endpoint, the server security, network, email, mobile, and cloud data sets or cl uh, security. Lastly, if you're looking for the most accurate detection and response solution, then you need to find the product with the most comprehensive data. So Sophos XDR is driven by multidimensional data that delivers the world's best detection and response. Sophos XDR's multidimensional data provides scope of data. So a unique approach that we are doing is blending rich on-device data with cross-product telemetry stored in a data lake. It provides the broadest and most in-depth contextualized insights for both live and offline devices. Now, our data sources naman, Sophos is the industry's only XDR solution that synchronizes native endpoint, firewall, and email security. And lastly, the quality of data. So Sophos has more high quality data, delivering stronger signals and less noise for better detection for the organization. Next is never missing a thing. As I've mentioned, we can delineate the capabilities or the options that um, that an organization would prefer. If they would want to enable, let's say, a data lake of 30 days of cross-product data, they can collab or co uh, correlate the information across endpoints, servers, firewalls, and emails, even offline. So they could access the data sets that they require for further investigation, even if um, um, the device currently is offline, primarily leveraging the data lake repository. So they have a historical view of that. It's not real time, primarily because for real time, they would utilize the on-device capabilities, which is a 90 days of incredibly rich endpoint and server data. They could utilize that to see real time and historical views as well of online devices that are currently onboarded with Sophos XDR. It provides more insights and has the capability to remotely um, the IT team has the capability to remotely access the device and take remedial actions through our live um, discover and live response capabilities of our de um, detection and response. They would just need, uh, because others are, uh, of course, there are some um, use cases that uh, do not or cannot um, do a data lake. So it is still an option that they have uh, if ever they would require it to be turned off. They could just, um, by default, it's turned off. And if they require it to be turned on, they would need to um, utilize the data lake repository over the cloud. They would just need to enable the uploading to the data lake of the devices that are onboarded with the Sophos XDR licenses. And lastly, for the benefits, um, Sophos XDR focuses on threat hunting and IT operations. So. Primarily, the three things, the three core tenets that um, that benefits or that provides benefits towards the the customers that we have is to reducing the time to detect, um, let's say, um, incidents and doing their investigative process, especially in relation to cybersecurity threats. 
reducing the time to investigate as well, and reducing the time to respond, primarily in automating uh, what needs to be done, and primarily in looking into um, further leveraging the detection and response capabilities of live discover and um, 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 our other um, detection and response capabilities as well that are uh, inside the feature sets of our SOPOS XDR. So this is some use case that we could expect that an organization would utilize an XDR component, especially in relation to SOPOS, primarily in leveraging um, the visibility that they have in across their subsets in, let's say, for example, their network, they can investigate the network data in looking into their SOPOS firewall. So having, um, having the ability to use ATP and IPS detections uh, to investigate, let's say, suspected hosts that is currently being run or, or currently running inside their IT infrastructure and cross-referencing uh, cross it uh, to block malicious traffic with other indicators of compromise as well, and having that context, not just on the endpoint, but also on the network layer as well. They could also look into investigations on their email data sets, like for example, comparing phishing campaigns, if ever it has a correlation with the, with the other uh, endpoint and other network um, um, indicators of compromise that they are currently experiencing. They could also utilize, as uh, we mentioned earlier, historical data, like um, utilizing cloud uh, over the data lake, looking into it uh, on uh, the previous 30 days that uh, that was uploaded. Uh, what are the data sets? Is there, is there any indicators of compromise or is there any actions or um, um, alerts or prioritizations that happened that um, uh, that is uh, very suspicious? And also see what is happening in real time uh, if they're going to look into the on data of uh, their devices that is currently onboarded on the XDR um, XDR um, set, and uh, they could look at it on a 90-day capability sets. Now they can also remediate identifying the suspicious files and quickly deleting them from uh, endpoint and mailboxes, and also has the the full benefit or the focus of uh, benefits or um, in the perspective of IT teams which is to identify unmanaged and unprotected devices and those that can be upgraded across the estate. And also, for example, why is the network connection slow? They could further investigate that as well, leveraging XDR capabilities. Now to sum up the options that uh, in the perspective of uh, our customer is that if they would need um, the product only and they would need to do it themselves, they have the capabilities of uh, doing, conducting threat hunting, investigate suspicious activity or responding to incidents, then um, um, SOFOS 6A plus XDR is more than enough for them. That would be our proposition, at least for the time being, if that is what they require. Let's say, for example, they have the capabilities and they would want to do it for them, then um, XDR capabilities uh, for the endpoint, that would be the 6 sub plus XDR. And let's say for the network, that would be our Sophos firewall plus an extreme license. That would be enough for them. And that would, um, that would allow them to do their threat hunting by themselves and investigate suspicious activities by themselves already. But if they would done, if, if they would need to do it, uh, they would need another party or they would need a service that would do it for them, doing the threat hunting, investigations of suspicious activity, responding to incidents, then they, we could provide the SOFOS MTR service, which is the managed threat and response. So this one is the service, as I've mentioned previously, that uh, we could provide to our customers in relation to um, further augmentation of their IT capabilities. Now, we also have our rapid response. This one, I believe I've already mentioned on uh, the previous webinars, but primarily if they have an active incident as of the moment, we, they could look into or we could look into our SOFOS RR or rapid response. So this is our um, incident response service wherein the SOFOS team, the SOFOS MTR team um, would go into that organization and look for um, indicators uh, of compromise, look for their data sets that is currently happening, look for what is the what is the, the current situation that is happening that is, uh, they are currently being attacked and help um, remediate that certain status that they currently have on the spot, which is this, that is why this is for an active incident. 
So we have that option as well, FYI, to everyone here on the call. Now the lineup, this is our last slide for today's webinar. Just to sum up everything, as I've mentioned earlier, if they would just need the protection, then that would be our Intercept X Advance or SIXA for short. That would be more than enough. This would provide them the protection that they require. Now, if they would need further detection and response, Intercept X Advance with XDR would be the one to be uh, proposed. Then if they would need, let's say, an MTR um, service, then it would be our Intercept X Advance with XDR plus MTR that provides them a managed service if ever that uh, they would require a managed detection and response in their um, cybersecurity requirements. So basically, that ends our overview for the changes for what uh, we could expect on our Sophos XDR. I hope that uh, uh, I was able to provide further information sets towards our audience here on the call. And thank you everyone for attending our webinar. I wish you have a good day and thank you for seeing a lot of familiar names here on the webinar. My name is Anthony Arroyo and I wish you all the best and I do hope to see you all again on our next webinar. So thank you again, everyone. Please stay safe and I won't uh, take too much of your time anymore because we already extended. Thank you everyone, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you again. This is Anthony. And have a good day, everyone. Please stay safe. Hope to see you all uh, personally when the pandemic uh, has ended. Thank you, everyone.